Hello everybody. In this video, I am going to give an update on my portfolio. Right now, my portfolio is worth $90,666.43. In the past year, I am up $32,677.55. Year to date for the year 2024 so far, I am up $7,770.00. And 97 cents. Today was another red day for me. As you can see, I lost $1,211.49 during the day. After hours, I am up $579.03. But overall, I've been losing money in the past week. As you can see, in the past week, I am down $4,901.73. So about $5,000 down in the past week. I have added money to my portfolio. I've added a couple thousand actually. Let's look at my positions. For my options, I'm selling LUV $30 covered calls. These expire April 19. Total return $225. I'm selling PayPal $63 covered calls. These expire April 19. Total return $794. I'm selling SoFi $9 covered calls. These expire April 19. Total return $1,440. I'm selling Verizon $42 covered calls. These expire April 19. Total return, $140. I'm selling Amazon, $200 covered calls. These expired June 21st. Total return, $108. I'm selling Disney, $140 covered calls. These expired June 21st. Total return, $378. I'm selling Google $170 covered calls. These expired June 21st. Total return, I am down $67. I'm selling Robinhood $16 covered calls. These expired June 21st. Total return, $96. For my stocks, I have 300 shares of Amazon. Amazon is at $182.15. My average cost, $98.95. Total return, $24,963.76. I have 6,000 shares of SoFi. SoFi is at $7.17. Average cost, $5.62. Total return, $9,280.80. I have 300 shares of Disney. Disney is at $113.15. My average cost, $60. Total return, $15,000. $945. I have 100 shares of Google. Google is at $156.24. My average cost, $142.48. Total return, $1,376. I have 500 shares of Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines is at $28.79. My average cost, $28.03. Total return, $380. I have 200 shares of PayPal. PayPal is at $63.50. My average cost, $57.70. Total return, $1,160. I have 200 shares of Verizon. Verizon is at $39.76. 
Average cost, $39.31. Total return, $90.10. I have 400 shares of Robinhood. Robinhood is at $17.19. My average cost, $17.57. Total return, I am down $150. This is a margin account. My margin total is $102,142.67. My margin used is $95,504.61. That leaves me with about $6,638.06 .06 in buying power. My margin status is low risk. My buffer is $43,382.65. That's this green buffer right here before I hit my margin call. My annual interest rate is 8%. The daily interest that I'm paying is $19.88. We're getting closer and closer to the 19th. Today is the 17th, so there's only two days left. I think right now is a good time for me to talk about, you know, how my covered calls are going, what the benefits and the disadvantages are. So what are the advantages of covered calls? And this is clearly illustrated by something like PayPal. So for example, PayPal, my total return from the stocks is $1,160. But on top of that, I also have covered calls. So I have about $1,160 of return from the stocks. And then I have these covered calls. And the return from those is $794. So if I just had the stocks and did not do this covered call position, I wouldn't have this $794 worth of gains in addition to the gains that I have for my stocks, right? I, I, I have over 1100 worth of profit from the stocks alone. But on top of that, because I did this covered call on PayPal, I made an extra 800 bucks pretty much. Here's another example, SoFi. So for SoFi, right, my total return from the stocks alone is $9,280.80. That's just from the stocks. But on top of that, I also have these covered calls, right? I'm selling the SoFi $9 covered calls that expire in two days. And how much did I make from that? I'm up $1,440. So in addition to the over $9,000 worth of gains from SoFi stock, because I have this SoFi covered call that I sold, I made an extra $1,440 on top of the $9,000 that I made from the stocks. So as you can see, sometimes when covered calls are being sold and the stock price stays below the strike price, then you just make extra money on top of the gains that you already made from the stock. Now that's if the stock price stays below the strike price. For example, I, I sold the SoFi $9 covered calls and SoFi is at $7, which is below $9. Um, PayPal, I sold the $63 covered call. PayPal is at $63. So if it's at or below, then you're probably going to make some sort of money. Um, depending on, you know, the price of what you sold the covered call at, et cetera, et cetera. But generally speaking, if this price of the stock at expiration ends up being around, you know, the strike price you chose or below, most likely you made some money. So that's an example of how covered calls can be used to make extra income. In addition to the returns that you get from the stock, you make extra money from your covered calls. So that's some examples that I uh, have in my personal portfolio, right? That I'm using as my personal examples. What's another example? Oh, Verizon. So Verizon, if we look at the stock, 
my total return is $90.10. So I made $90 from the stock. Let's see how much I made from the covered calls. So I'm, I sold these Verizon $42 covered calls. Total return, $140. So I made $90 from the stock and I actually ended up making more money from the covered calls than I did from the stock. Lastly, what do we got? LUV, Southwest Airlines. Total return, $380 from the stock. So I made $380 from Southwest Airlines stock. Let's see how much I made from the covered call. So I'm selling the LUV $30 covered call. I made $225. So again, the money you make from the stock, and then if you sell covered calls and if that stock price stays below the strike price, you basically end up making extra money from the covered calls. In this case, I made an extra $225 because I chose the $30 strike price and LUV is below $30. It's at $28.79. So generally speaking, you want your covered calls to be below or at the strike price if you're looking to just make some extra money from the covered calls and collect the premium. Now it's a little bit trickier if you were looking at, you know, intentionally doing in the money covered calls, which is what I'm doing for hood. So for example, for Robin hood stock, this is different from the examples I just gave, because in this case, Robin hood is at $17 and 19 cents. I chose a strike price that's below the current strike, uh, the current stock price. So in, I'm intentionally choosing a strike price that's below the stock price because I actually don't mind if these get called away. Like I'm, I'm okay if Robinhood stock ends up being above the strike price and not below it. And if it does go below it, like I mentioned before, you collect the money from the premium from the covered call. And although I do take a hit because the stock price decreased, if it's a stock that I believe in long term, then my mindset is, okay, it's eventually going to go back up anyways, because I believe it in long term. So it's not really a loss. But yeah, that's basically some examples of how covered calls can be used and it can be advantageous if you use it in a certain way to just collect extra money using the covered calls. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. We're going to see what's happening in two days when all of these expire. And then I'll have to decide what I'm going to do next um, after they expire. Most likely, I'm going to sell some more covered calls. I just have to decide what strike price I want. We'll see. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.